All right, I wanted to sit with you for a moment. Uh, boy, what you wonder what all these pillars are doing here? Well, uh, when you get old, you know, you put pillars in your, the backs of your chairs and stuff because your back is, is <laughs> sometimes it's hurting or it kind of cushions the, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? If you're up there in age, you know what I mean. Um, we got a real rainstorm going on out there right now. And I was going to do this in the garage, but uh, it just raining too hard out there. I had to close it. But, and we needed the rain. I'll tell you, we've been dry down here. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you just a little short time today about, uh, I know a lot of you, when you get started in whittling or get started in carving, you want to sell your stuff. And over the years, I've seen a trend that, uh, that now remember a lot of professional carvers sell their items to um, people who are collectors or collect their particular, uh, like a Lynn Doty, he sells most of his stuff, you know, most of his stuff's pretty expensive to uh, collectors and things like that. Not that there's anything wrong, his stuff is amazing. So he can get that kind of money from a collector. But when you're a, just a normal carver, whittler, whatever it is, and you go to these, uh, or even a carving show, or go to uh, craft fairs, or go to things like that, you're not gonna get to what you would call most of the time the big spenders. The people that are willing to put out that much money and I feel today with the inflation crunch that we're going through and anyone that has been to the grocery store or anything like that knows the inflation that we're going through right now and I mean you can go to the grocery store and buy a couple of sacks I'm talking about go to Walmart and buy a couple of walk out with a couple of sacks of uh, groceries and it's a hundred bucks every bit of it so in those times when people uh inflation is bad the economy is is you know i mean the economy is still good but it's just so expensive to live then what happens is then people make a decision do i spend money on what i want or do i spend them on the necessities of life and usually if you have children, the necessities and things like that. So I'm sure that, that because of inflation, craft fairs, things like that, those type of things, even wood carving shows in themselves, I'm sure they sell some things. But if I have seen in most cases, in a lot of cases, if you really want to sell an item uh, to people um, that are going to buy something that won't break their bank in other words now most people when they go on vacation for instance and those are usually the type of areas the tourist areas and stuff that you can go and find where you can actually sell your stuff and everything like that they're usually on a budget not all but most people are on a budget so they don't always have the money for extras as we were just talking about, but they do have $20 here or maybe $30 or something like that. And I have always believed as a whittler that if you keep your items and even it takes you to cut, to carve smaller items or whatever it is, if you keep your items between 10 and $20 or 25 or something like that, then you can usually sell your items because you're not breaking the bank of the people that are wanting to buy these things. Um, now, I, I know there's going to be people that's going to... argue about, well, I can sell this, and I can sell that, and I can do this, and I can do that, and, I, and everything like that. And I sell this and I that. But, I recently was um, reading from a chainsaw carver 
a man who is a chainsaw carver who has a business and he's just not selling. And people are coming in, people are watching, they're seeing, but they're not buying. Now, I know chainsaw carvings are very expensive. I mean, compared, you know, I mean, most chainsaw carvings that I've seen, you start at $100 and work your way up, and that's the small. I've seen the small bears um, in Townsend and Branson and um, other places like that. Your small bears will start at 100 bucks and work their way up. And so a lot of these shops have carvings in the ranges of two, three, four, five hundred dollars. And that does, people that are on vacation does, do consider that breaking the bank in a lot of ways. I mean, unless they have a lot of money and money is no object to them. But most of your people that, that walk around don't have that kind of money just to throw away on wood carvings. But they will throw it away on $20 items up to 25, maybe even 30, because they, they can afford that. But if you want to really sell your pieces, and, and then just, just, this is just a word of advice, try to keep them in that range. Uh, I learned that a long time ago from a lady by the name of Miss Whitehead, who uh, we used to carve in our carving group, and she's, she's passed now. But a lot of guys got pretty angry at her because she, she would only ask, I don't think she sold a carving over $30. And, and uh, I mean, I'm ta talking about, they were small stuff and things, but she wouldn't charge that much more. And some of the carvers that were selling their duck decoys and stuff for $200, $300 and things like that, they, you could see there was a bit of jealousy uh, because she would sell out on all of her stuff. She'd sell all of her stuff. She'd pay for a table and have money extra and all that other stuff. Where some of these guys wouldn't sell enough hard even to pay for their table. Now why was that? And she taught me about that. And I still felt at times that, um, that maybe she was wrong about that, but even more that money is tighter and more crunched now on families, uh, this lesson was an important lesson learned. So just a word of advice. If you're going to do, you know, if you're a commission carver, if you're doing it for someone, then you can charge them, and they, they, you pretty much have an understanding. But if you're just going to sell at craft shows and things like that, uh, I'm sure they do sell $100 items and things like that. I'm not saying they don't. But if you, if you really want, and, and what, what's even great is that you say you have a person that has a car in there that's $100, okay? Are most of their carvings run around a hundred bucks? Yet you have, uh, and he has ten of them. But yet you have twenty or twenty-five or thirty carvings that are cheaper, in the somewhere fifteen to twenty dollar range or something like that. Well, the thing is, if you sell most all of your stuff, you're going to come out a whole lot better than that guy that, that had the hundred dollar carvings because he's he's not selling. So, I, I believe in, 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 in trying to, to keep within a range that the normal person can enjoy and buy your carvings from. And, and that's what I, I, I believe that, that uh, Miss Whitehead, what she told me many years ago, worked. It worked for her. And a lot of guys went to that, that system and they sold most of their stuff at carving shows that I was a part of and, and all that. So all I'm saying is, and, and I know I'm going to get a lot of people that, well, no, that's not, you know, no, 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 no. Uh, I sold $300 item. Yes, you can do that if a person has a lot of money. And it doesn't interfere. I mean, think about this for a minute. Just, just imagine, all right? 
Say that I take my family out to, and I mean, my family are all grown, but say my son takes his kids to, uh, say he takes them to a Pigeon Forge. And he, everybody knows how expensive everything is in Dollywood and things like that. Well, something that costs two or three hundred dollars, I mean, you can go a long way with two or three hundred dollars with a family. Now, I mean, you can go to something the kids enjoy and, and pay that much where they really have a good time, where you just have a carving that you set on, you, on your, your desk, in other words. So, uh, most people that are on vacation are on a budget and they're going to not uh, buy anything for themselves that break the bank. And most people that buy carvings, you know, women and things like that, that see a carving and like them and, and things like that, they, they are the ones that usually see something they like and they would like to have. But I have, I have uh, just tried that. I, uh, these, uh, for instance, these little birds, uh, like this, in other words, little cardinals and things, the, this is kind of based off Doug Linker's uh, videos, and uh, these are done out of the one by one blocks instead of, instead of the, the dowels and stuff. Uh, women like these, people like these, in other words. Now, these don't take a whole long time. You can sell one of these for 15 or 20 dollars and do good, but if you sell 10 of them, for twenty dollars, that's um, two hundred dollars you've got there. And the guy with with uh, with the three hundred dollar, yeah, all he does do is make one purchase. But um, I, I'm just telling you that that normal people and those that, that might buy your stuff are not in people. And, and I know there's people that got a lot of the guys at the car got mad and they would say, well. She just given her carvings away. Well, she really wasn't. It wasn't costing her that much. She was getting free wood. She was doing all that stuff, and and all she was doing was paying for her table, and and and, and plus uh, she had extra money for tools and and buying more carving stuff and things like that. Uh, nobody's going to get rich, folks. We all know that. Um, but if you really just want to sell your stuff and make enough to pay the tables, maybe. If you have to travel to a carving show, you want to help pay for your motel or something like that. I think if you stay, if you you know, if you sell uh, twenty um, uh, twenty dollar things, you know, that's that's four hundred dollars. So uh, uh, so you you can help a whole lot pay for your trip or whatever. In other words, now. I know that some people are look at something and oh okay and it's but very often do you see that uh, I don't see it a whole lot and um, I remember that I was at a carving show in Tyler Texas and this guy just had on his table whittlings and they were little dolls and things like that and he was selling them all of them because uh, especially small things going whatnot shelves and and all these other things and, and the guy I think was selling the little dogs for I think they were around 18 to 20 dollars or something like that and he was selling all of them. So it's not a have to but I think it's wise and, and, and uh, trying to keep your your uh, carvings or whatever it is I, and, and I learned that from a very famous carver, uh, who I thought was a famous carver, his name was Pete Engler. And uh, I think I've told this story, but where he was in Branson, Missouri, and he had a, sh had a shop up there. And he was carving a Santa Claus, a very large Santa Claus, it was probably that big. And I sat down with him, and I just was kind of picking his brain a little bit. He was just a very nice man. He's passed also now, but he. I asked him, I said, well, you know, Mr. Engler, what do you sell most in your shop? Because I had been to his shop a lot of times, and a lot of the bigger carvings and the more expensive carvings, they had been there every year that I went back to his shop. 
and he said that, uh, well, my bread and butter is, most of them were a lot, were his, um, like his little uh, uh, Christmas tree ornaments and things like that. And most of them were in the range of, of uh, 20 25 $30. And that's, he said that was where his bread and butter came from because he sold more of those rather than the larger carvings and, 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 and making a, a large commission at one time. So, um, I guess it's pretty good advice from a man who was probably knew more about carving than a lot of people ever did. He'd been doing it for 40 years, I think, or whatever it was. So, is that always the case? No. No, because chainsaw carvers, they still sell their, their stuff. But, um, but that's just customers that Usually that's retired customers. That's retirees and who their children are all grown and things like that. And a lot of those are also that way. But uh, one of the things that with the guy that was at the whittling table, his little dogs and stuff, you, the little kids would see him and mommy can I have one of these please please and all that other stuff. And the mother would buy it for the child. So just that's just a little advice you don't have to take it the best thing about my advice you don't have to take it <laughs> so I just say if if you think about how you sell if you want to sell your things think about and, and, and just try experiment take one of your larger carvings that say you're wanting 175 200 dollars for and put them over here and then carve some small things and put them over here and see the ratio of the $20, $15 things that you're going to sell compared to the um, $200, $175, carving or $150 or whatever it is. And just see, you know, experiment in shows if you go to carving shows and or sit at them or sell at them or whatever it is and just see. And I think you'll find that the ratio, you'll sell more of the smaller stuff because people just, they, you know, I, I look at the look on their faces and I think you have two if you've been in carving shows, you know, well, that's $300. And they're, oh, I like that, you know, and well, how much is that? Well, that's 300 bucks. And they, you can see them just, their eyes roll and back up, you know, well, I don't like it that much, you know. <laughs> um, you, you, they don't even have to say it. You can just look in their eyes and see it. So anyway, this is just a word of advice. Um, God bless you. We've got a storm going on out there. Uh, God bless you. And uh, I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, please don't, you know, send me a bunch of hate things. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about and stuff. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But I know enough to see what I have seen over the years. And uh, I'll tell you, um, and I've learned from other people. So, I'm just saying, consider that, you know, what, what your audience is and uh, uh, what you're going to make. Like I said, try, try and make a little bit of both and see about which probably is going to sell quickest. Okay, God bless you now and uh, I hope everybody's carving well and I'll have some more videos. Go to Doug Linker. Doug's got a new one right now, uh, carving these little men. And, and um, so, God bless you now. Be good.